Hey everybody. Thought I'd do a little update video on the truck today. I haven't really done one in quite some time. The weather over the summer here has been pretty off and on as far as weather goes. It seems like every day I get off, it seems like it's always raining or it's windy or cold. It's not even that very warm out today, but... And then on the nice days I'm at work, so I don't really get much time to make videos, unfortunately, but... I thought I'd make one today for you anyways. And I figured I would show a little bit of the updates I've done. And recently, within the past couple of months here anyways, I've gone ahead and, I don't know how well you can see this, but I replaced the steering box in this truck. It's not a redhead box, I was thinking about getting a redhead steering box, but I thought maybe I'd just try original <coughs> OEM one just for the price and that, but I know a lot of guys swear by the redhead boxes for these trucks, but I may at some point, but yeah, I figured I just went with an OEM one for now, like a, like a, you know, a standard brand or whatever. I don't even remember what brand it was, but, but yeah, I replaced the steering box on it. Um, still got a lot of the other stuff I've done, like, I've got the aftermarket, uh, Spec D, Spec D Harley Davidson style, uh, headlights. They've got like the LED strip on the bottom. I really, really like those. They make a big difference driving at nighttime. And then I've got little LED fog lights I put on. I've got my my cheap eBay Cree brand uh, light bar. It's actually really bright for how much I spent for it. But you can see there that the, the powder coat or the paint or whatever is starting to come off. But it's not that big of a deal really custom grill I made for it. Um, I've got the Mickey Thompson Baja ATZ P3 tires, 265 by 75 R16 low, load range E tires. This is the third season I've run these for now. Like I just run these in the summertime. Like this is the third season I've run with these and they've held up extremely well and I've pulled some pretty big trailers and that with them too and they've they've been holding up extremely well. I'm very happy with these tires actually. And surprisingly, believe it or not, as aggressive as they are, like they make like little to no noise when you're driving when you're driving down the highway. Which is surprising actually, but all the reviews I read of them were extremely positive before I went ahead and purchased them. And the paint is holding up decent on these. There's a little bit of chipping going on, but I'm gonna touch those up over the winter time when I swap when I swap my rims and tires out for my winter tires. And I've still got the Skyjacker shocks. Those have been working really well. Um, I, I did actually, speaking of those, I did um, replace my steering damper with a new one. Well, the same one, but it works really well. Uh, not really new per se, but the I did change the power steering cooler on this a while, a long, a long while ago, and it's been holding up really well down there. <clears throat> I do have, I don't know how well you can see it, but this here, that's an electric fan I have um, on a toggle switch I can turn on just for cooling my my transmission cooler. I've got a six liter power stroke. Uh, transmission cooler in this truck. It's right here actually. It's it right in front of the fan. I have it right up front just for maximum cooling. And that works extremely well. And then the fan I can turn on and off as I need it type thing, but just for if it's like a ridiculously hot day and you're you're pulling something heavy through hills or something, it's nice to have. Truck is a mess, but It's like a work vehicle and a, a daily driver, so it's a little tough. I need to clean out the back seat again, but. A 
couple extra tools I have. I gotta put these in the toolbox still. Under a little winch mount for the trailer. Put that on eventually for the upper deck. Picked up some of these little clips here too. These will be useful for uh I think I'm gonna use one of these for locking my my trailer brake controller for when I'm loading a vehicle onto the trailer. I can use one of these to lock the the switch or the button shut on the brake controller so it'll lock the trailer brakes up when I'm loading something so it doesn't like rock the trailer back and forth as much. I'll try that out and see if that works or not. But yeah, I've still got the glow shift gauges up there which work extremely well. I've got the transmission temperature and the coolant temperature gauges. And I put in the lariat seats, which are still holding up nice. They're used, of course, but back one there and everything. Really comfortable seats. Way, way better than the crappy bench seats I had in this before, because this is just an XL model, so it has all, like, the bare basic stuff. Like, manual windows, manual locks, manual mirrors, uh, four-wheel drive, gear shift on the floor, which I really like. But yeah. Yeah, and I still got the Durali or Duraley or Derail, however you pronounce that, the deep transmission pan with the little cooling tubes on it. And that's been working really well. There's no really complaints or problems with it I've had since I put it on. I did a video on that a while ago when I installed that and it's been holding up really well. But the CV antenna, I think it's a five foot. It's a five foot whip, and I just have it mounted right to my fender. And that seems to get really good range, actually. All my switches for my lights and stuff. Nothing really too much to show in here. Nothing really new, anyways. Those are my gauges like I showed you earlier. CB is mounted down there. Oops. Got my safety glasses. I got my Bluetooth headset. Works really well. I love this thing. And that's my microphone for the CB. Mounts right there. Little holder thing I've got. I got this off of eBay for like seven dollars. I've had quite a few of these over the years. Like as they break I just buy another one but it just mounts right into the CD, the CD holder part of the radio for holding your cell phone in place, and that works like extremely well. I love that thing. But yeah, there's not really too much to show in here. Windshield was new, and then after like the first week of having it, some guy didn't sweep the the rocks off of his flat deck trailer and a rock catapulted off at highway speed and marred my windshield up so that was I still have to repair that it's, I've repaired so many chips and windshields but it seems I can never keep up with it but yeah that's pretty much everything inside here really I mean this video is not really going to be like an in-depth one by any means but more or less just a brief overlay of Pretty much like little stuff, I suppose. Kind of just felt like making one about stuff like this. Eventually, I'm going to do a video of like the inside of my toolbox, like everything I keep in there. I keep quite a bit of stuff in there, like. Sorry, car just driving by. I thought that was someone I knew for a second. But no, I would wager that this toolbox, it probably weighs like five to six hundred pounds. And I'm not exaggerating, like. I did the rough math of everything I have in there and the approximate weight of each item, and yeah, it's it wouldn't really be far from the truth if I was to say this weighs anywhere from five to six hundred pounds loaded. Like, it's a heavy box with everything in it, and yeah, it's it's bolted down. There's no worries there. It is bolted to the truck. It's it's not free falling. But but yeah, I've still got my. Uh, 
excuse me, sorry. I'm still getting over a pretty bad cold I've had this past couple of weeks too. <coughs> excuse me. But yeah, I've still got my heavy duty OEM springs. I love these things. The six leafs are so much stronger than the old five, the old crappy five pack I had on this when I first got the truck. It's like, it's night and day difference for that extra leaf spring, I'm serious. And then the added Hellwigs I put up top. Uh, those are the Hellwig Pro Series helper springs with uh, the little rubber, the little rubber dampers or whatever you want to call them that prevent the like the rattling or the creaking noise. I guess you could have if they they didn't have that. It's kind of like a flex bushing type thing. But yeah, these Hellwigs they help a they help a great deal with with preventing trailer squat. I I much prefer helper springs over airbags, but that's just me. I got my fifth wheel brackets in there. And uh, I got the rear sway bar still. I actually, coincidentally, earlier today, I replaced the bushings on this again. This this truck likes to destroy le uh, the um, sway bar bushings for some reason. I don't understand why. The front ones last an awful long time. I only replace those maybe once a year. You know, if that. And uh, the rear I've replaced, that's probably the third, maybe the fourth set I've replaced in a year's time, and I'm not joking. And, you know, I've tried Moogs, and the Moogs I find aren't even that good, so I just, I bought a different brand this time. Uh, I was going to buy the Ford Motorcraft ones, but then when I, when I discovered that they are $80 a bushing, so two, so two of those would be 160 bucks plus tax, I thought, yeah, there's, there's got to be a better way. So, what I actually did today was, um, I bought the bushings, and then, so I swapped those out, and I thought to myself, there's probably something else I can do just to add a little bit more rigidity to these, just so you avoid the, the slop and the sway bar. And yes, they are the right diameter size. I took a micrometer to this sway bar, and it's a 30 millimeter sway bar. So I made sure to get like the proper bushings for it for the right size and everything because there's different size sway bars for these trucks. So I ended up taking, if I can find it here, here it is. I ended up taking this old mud flap I had and I cut, cut two identical strips out of it. So I basically took cut a strip off, or two strips rather, off this old mud flap I had that was on the truck a long time ago. Just a thin mud flap. And it's got this nice, like, uh, textured or, or rigid grooves in the, the side that would face the, the tire on the truck, right? So I thought if I cut a couple of strips off this, it's thin enough that it, I figured it would fit between, like if I took a strip and wrapped it around like the D-shaped part of that bushing on the sway bar, that it would add like another layer of thickness where it'll hopefully resist the side-to-side -side play that it gets prematurely with the bushings. As well as this textured rigid part would like I have that facing inwards against the bushing so that'll hopefully like act like a extra grip or or like uh, it'll grab so it'll help resist like side to side movement with the sway bar and like prevent premature wear on those bushings so you know I've just replaced so many of those bushings and you know I figured maybe it'd be worth trying this I mean but In a worst case scenario, it's not gonna do it, but it's just an old mud flap I had, so. But yeah, this is a 16K rated hitch. It's fully adjustable too, which is nice. I've actually adjusted it from down here. You can see the marks where it used to be, and I adjusted it to that just for better height positioning, and that height's pretty much perfect for what I need it for. I actually just picked up these the other day too from uh, from work these things here they're uh what brand makes these again i think reese reese makes them and kurt makes them but they're basically they're 18,000 pound rated uh auxiliary 
uh, chain hooks for your safety chains because I guess it depends on where you live but sometimes the DOT or the, the insurance companies they expect or they want a person to hook their safety chains somewhere that's not the, the hitch itself like on the gooseneck hitch I had these D-rings welded onto it for safety chain loops and then I kind of thought that if this ever failed like this whole plate failed or you know whatever then they're not really going to do you much good so if you have them pinned right in the rails instead of the actual hitch plate then it's it's safer and these are actually rated too like these D-rings are rated for 11,000 but I don't know these are each rated for 18,000 which is more than what my trailer is even rated for so and more than I'd you know pull with the truck anyway so I think that's just safer and they just pin in place they came with the pins and everything so but yeah the fifth wheel gooseneck safety chains I got my seven way wherever it is there it is seven way pin for a trailer connection if you're pulling gooseneck or fifth wheel um, I still got my fire extinguisher mounted in there um, let's see I've also got I guess this is something new I've put on as well it's a uh, Stromberg or Carlson Stromberg uh, airflow or fifth wheel tailgate and it works extremely well I really like it you don't have to uh, bring down the tailgate when you hook onto a trailer like that so it saves you from crunching your your tailgate when you're hooking onto like a fifth wheel trailer but yeah the, the tailgate basically allows you to hook onto like a fifth wheel trailer or a gooseneck trailer without needing to drop the tailgate to hook on because I don't know the one time you forget to to drop it or if you hook onto the trailer I don't know if you back up too far you could crunch the tailgate if it's down you could crunch it against the the nose of your trailer so you could you know damage your tailgate and box and the trailer potentially or you could just put one of these on and then you never have to even worry about it because you don't even have to drop the tailgate so you've eliminated one step so and it looks really good I quite like the looks of these actually I think they they got like the nice retro look like a lot of people used to run these when I was a kid I remember and uh, I always like the looks of them, so I think it looks really good actually in the black. Actually makes getting in the back of the truck a little easier too. Like you don't even have to bring it down. You can just like hike yourself over that. It's not even that big of a step, so that's nice too. But yeah, I've got the Spider LED tail lights. I've had those on the truck forever. That was like one of the first things I did when I got this truck was I put those on. I've got the chrome forward mud flaps front and back still. Those haven't changed. I've still got my, uh, kind of hard to see it back here, uh, the Kurt Commercial Duty uh, two and a half inch, 20,000 pound rated hitch receiver, which is highly, highly recommended if you do anything like serious towing with your, your truck because those factory hitch receivers are junk like depending on what year you buy it from like they're junk you'll bend that or you'll snap that because they're only rated for like five or six thousand pounds i mean it depends on what you have but a lot of the time those factory hitch receivers are just they're in they're in no comparison to like a a true class five hitch from kurt or draw tight or reese there's no comparison but and then I've got these uh, rock solid mud flaps. Uh, what are these? Rock solid tow guards. And they're like rubber strips. They're like individual strips that run across the whole way. And these were about half the price of rock tamers. And unlike rock tamers, in my opinion, these actually run more or less the entire width of the truck where rock tamers, if you've ever seen them, it's one big flap there and one big flap there. So all of this and this is like all exposed. So that's pretty much this area that you could throw rocks at your trailer. So I saw these um, 
on YouTube, actually. And I really liked them, and the price was way better than Rock Tamers, and in my opinion, I think they're better than Rock Tamers. And they fully tighten around the hitch shank, a two-inch hitch shank. They have stainless steel hardware, nuts and bolts, and they just they bolt right around whatever hitch you have in your trailer hitch, so or in your hitch receiver rather. So there's no there's no side to side. Any side to side you see there is the play in the receiver to the hitch. But you have that with literally any trailer hitch you have, even with a good reducer. Because I've got a two I've got a two inch reducer to this, because it's a two and a half inch uh, hitch as I just said, the Kurt. And then my Pintle hitch is the same. I've had this forever. Uh, it's rated for 16,000 pounds, which again is way more than I'd ever pull, but it's more it's better to have more than enough than not enough. 16,000 pound Pintle ball, and then the Pintle hook itself is also rated at 16,000. It's kind of faded, but yeah, it says 8 tons. i got to give this a little shot of cleaning paint. And then... I guess as well, but there's little clevises on here too for uh, if I'm pulling like a smaller a smaller trailer, like a little boat or a little tent trailer, I can hook I can hook the little hooks onto these instead of on this because sometimes they won't fit on these giant these giant tow hooks on the hitch. So that's what these are for. And then I've got a locking pin. I've got to clean that out because that looks pretty scary. Locking pin just so people can't steal your hitch. And I've got this, I've had this for a long time too, this aftermarket seven-way plug. It has the LED indicators, but that works extremely well too. It's up on the actual bumper itself, instead of hanging down low where rocks and crap can hit it. Way up high, it's a way better spot for it in my opinion. But yeah, not really a whole lot to tell about it really. It hasn't changed a whole lot. I'll certainly be doing videos of the trailer and stuff and you know more in-depth videos down the road towing and hauling stuff and reviews and how to's and stuff like that it's more this is more or less kind of just a I don't really know like a thrown together video of a review basically of just you know any changes I've done to the truck that are of any significance I guess something else that I can show you guys I don't think I ever did show this before This uh, brake controller I have, a uh, Prodigy, it's a Prodigy? Yeah, Prodigy P2. Uh, I think it's by Taconcha, if I'm not mistaken. That's the box for it down there, actually. But, yeah, this works really well, because I used to have the Kurt, I had the Kurt brake controller in here. And uh, I came to a point where I had to pull a trailer for someone that had electric over hydraulic brakes. And the Kurt, the Kurt I had... Uh, was not capable of doing that uh, with electric over hydraulic uh, but the P2 is compatible with electric and electric over hydraulic so and it's actually a bit of a stronger controller I find like it's uh, it's got a bit more response to it I find than the Kurt did so it's it's a good brake control actually I thought it was pretty worth the money and it lets you pull literally any trailer you could ever need because you're not limited to a, a certain type of braking system on the trailer because it, like it can do both you can change the settings so it can do both but yeah still yeah like i was saying before this is kind of just a rough kind of thrown together video i don't really mean to call it a lazy video but it's like a i'm kind of all over the place because you know i kind of just felt like making a review video of it and I figured I haven't done a video in a while, so I thought I'd kind of do a rough, a rough teardown of stuff I've done to the truck, just as like a recap. But I'll certainly be doing more in-depth videos here. I'll be getting um, some moving stuff with my trailer and uh, some other interesting stuff coming, so yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry it was kind of just, you know, thrown together like I said and, you know, kind of all over the place, but But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh feel free to like, comment, subscribe or 
you know, comment down below asking whatever you want. And uh, let me know what you guys like to see and what you guys want to see. And and uh, I'll do my best to try and, and make it happen for you guys. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.